barbershop conversation, guys, feel free to hit the subscription button. So I finally watched Earl Spence and uh, Leonard Bondo. And uh, I intentionally watched this fight from a negative perspective. Uh, I watched um, um, the Chris Algieri Earl Spence fight with great hype and great anticipation. And he gladly fulfilled all my taste buds. But uh, I was looking for, because I knew he was going to win, like many of us did. I was looking at kinks in his armor to where I can see him fighting a guy like Keith Thurman, uh, Sean Porter, uh, Kel Brooks, and, and fighters of this magnitude. What I did see was, uh, now, now let me be clear before I talk. I'm a fan of Earl Spence, but I'm just looking at it from a different vernacular because I'm trying to find some flaws and weaknesses. By no means is this a... Uh, a uh, kill piece on Earl Spence. He's the next best thing in boxing. He's on a collision course with Terrence Crawford uh, uh, and all these other young fighters that are coming up. Uh, potentially Caleb Plant down the line. You know if they can make a catch weight three years from now. I don't know, but uh, they're definitely on a collision course. He may be on a collision course with Canelo Alvarez. You know what I mean? Because he can easily make 54 if you look. If you saw his body yesterday. Seven pounds won't really do much for him. But anyways, what I saw is an, he is basically the Golden State Warriors. He's going to out-offense you. And he's very disciplined. Don't get me wrong. He's very... Footwork is not Floyd Mayweather footwork, but every all his footwork is intentional. You know how fighters waste footwork, like a Sean Porter. He wastes a lot of footwork sometimes. Um... But everything he does has intent, and he's always on balance. And he is, an, again, an offensive juggernaut. He's the Golden State Warriors of boxing. That means he believes his six punches, he can get in six punches before you land two. And he just ultimately believes he can get his four-punch combination off before you land one, potentially land one. Now, here's where I see his weaknesses is. When you're all offense, as you get casual and casual in the fight, as you guys saw, third or fourth round, that overhand right, them check shots was uh, was coming through. As you get comfortable in the fight, if you believe you're winning or, or have the capacity to win, you become confident in your abilities. And that's what tend to happen to him yesterday. He took those shots because he knew Leonard Bondu was on, on his way. Now, as he steps up in competition, which he has done, the Chris Algeries, the Leonard Bondu, because... This causes for great promotion for a big fight. It's no way in hell he doesn't deserve a big fight now. Now, I was on record saying he hasn't earned it uh, about eight months ago. But now he has officially earned the right to step into the ring with anybody he wants to. Now, moving forward. Keith Thurman is a very cerebral fighter. And every time Keith Thurman throws that check hook, as you guys saw in the... Uh, um, Sean Porter fight. He's looking for that one-time shot. Now, Earl Spence is a much taller fighter than Sean Porter. So it's much easier for Sean Porter to, to dodge those check hooks because he's much shorter. He can see it coming. Now, when you're three inches taller, that's three inches of distance that you have to get away more. So I think he'll he'll do more more shelling up to defend that uh to defend that that check hook by Keith Thurman, but what a fight that will be! I I genuinely think that he can get hit with those check hooks, but can Keith Thurman sustain that body shot, the body work that Earl Spence puts in? Now I now to a Sean Porter. It, you know, I, I look at the Sean Porters of the world. He will be the fourth best welterweight for the duration of his career. You, you, you guys get what I'm saying? Because he's lost to Kell Brooks and he's lost to Keith Thurman. He will never be out of the top five just because of what he brings to the table. He will always be behind the three champions and he will always be the fourth guy. Even if he holds a belt, he kind of like the Tim Bradley effect, right? Tim Bradley held the WBO belt. At 47, but he was never really in the top four. He was always the fifth guy. You guys understand? And I think Sean Porter is in that category. He can beat all of them. But because he's not 
he has does he doesn't bring that special effect he doesn't have the organic boxing style that we like everything behind the jab and it is vi it's visual it's visually not as pleasing if you guys get what i'm saying but getting back to earl spence the flaws i see is he sometimes get too offensive minded and he's open for counter shots now we don't know will it catch up with him at 26 27 28 i don't know but as he gets older those weaknesses will catch up with him and uh i'm just anxious like you guys to see him in a big fight by the end of the year he rightfully deserves it and uh keith thurman has an out he has a wba mandatory uh the own wbc he can do whatever he wants i mean i i, I Whoever has the money in boxing owns the WBC, as we saw with Canelo, as we saw with Floyd Mayweather. So since Al Heyman has the money, that green belt has the value. So anyways, uh, we'll have to see. Earl Spence is basically on standby. No matter what you say right now, you want to demand a fight? Earl Spence is on standby right now because no one truly wants to fight him. Not unless The only mandatory he has is Kell Brooks, but Kell Brooks can dance around 154, come back down to 147 let the shit go to purse bid uh have these great demands they can't come to it and what do you know we don't have a fight until next summer and he gets in two more title defenses so uh barbershop conversations now on the positive side love errol spence he's amazing i can't wait to see him fight uh he is the most he is one of the most consistent offensive minded fighters we have in boxing um kind of like a canelo alvarez type but a, 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 a much more athletic version where canelo is always on the offense you know what i mean like always moving forward always trying to land big shots but he don't have the arm speed canelo is as as a neuro spence but uh i actually want to see that fight earl spence canelo i don't want to see kell brook i don't know if that fight is not even in the makings right now but it makes sense based off of Triple G and uh, uh, Canelo's uh, recent history. So we should be pushing that fight. So anyways, Barbershop Conversations. My video is late. You've probably heard three or four reviews by now from Dante and uh, Boxing Ego and everyone else on down the line. But uh, I genuinely appreciate you guys' support. You guys are awesome. I covered the Drew League yesterday and that took up a bunch of my time. And, you know, I ended up hanging out with them all day yesterday and... Uh, I got home exceptionally late, and now I'm back. So, <laughs> anyways, Barbershop Conversation, you guys are awesome. And uh, don't forget, tomorrow, we have a small card, Toe to Toe Tuesdays. Please pay attention to Caleb Plant. I love Earl Spence, but Caleb Plant is my favorite young fighter right now. You know what I mean? I love his style. I love his sweet pea combination with Floyd Mayweather with a slight bit of Earl Spence power. So, anyways, Barbershop Conversation, you guys are awesome. Talk to you guys soon. Peace.